the 600i Touring. Beautiful, sleek origin bodywork, wonderfully sculpted interiors, an in-game environment specifically designed to give a sense of luxury for those who are willing to pay a little extra for it. But to what extent is that investment worthwhile for the in-game performance? I'm Forrester, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Origin 600i Touring which is described on the Star Citizen website as a touring and exploration ship. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then you probably know what to expect with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. And the tour for the 600i starts from entering the ship via the elevator at the front under the nose. The options for this elevator are to go all the way up to the top deck or to head up to the lower deck. We'll start the tour from the lower deck. There's some nice origin styling and decorations as you enter the ship, and moving to the front of the 600i, you're greeted with the master bedroom. There's a nice seated table and desk. A nice area to sit down and write a book and smoke a cigar. And a fantastic sleeping area with panoramic views out to the front of the ship. Hidden away on the starboard side next to a plant wall is the master bedroom bathroom. Once again, this room does evoke the luxury ideals of origin. Moving further back through the lower deck, we enter into this common area. There's plenty of seating and a stairwell that leads to the upper deck. There are some plants in the wall, and there's also a viewing port to showcase whatever is below the 600i. Moving further back on the lower deck, we pass through another elevator which leads to the top deck. Some more origin styling on the walls. And then the crew section of the 600i. Here are four beds for use by the crew. Whilst this section isn't quite as luxurious as other parts of the ship, it's still a fairly nice space. At the rear of the ship there's four escape pods and a seating area, as well as bathrooms for the crew use. Each of these bathrooms is pretty much identical. Moving further forward through the lower deck, we'll move to the upper deck of the 600i. For this, we'll head up the nice stairwell, and we're in the top section here of this central area. Moving back through the ship, we pass the elevator, 
and there's a small room off to the side which holds a space for armoury weapons, suits of armour and the like. Not all of this is yet fully functional. At the back of the top deck of the 600i is the bar area. Once again, there's some plentiful glass at the back that lets you enjoy whatever you're looking out to, as well as some glass that shows the deck below. There's a couple of seats at the bar, as well as a nice table and seating area to enjoy the view from the back of the ship. There's some stairs that take you down into the lower deck once again, but this area is self-contained, split off from the rest. At the back there's a pool table, a couple of seats for watching a screen, and a kitchen and dining area. Off to either side are two small rooms, here is where you'll find the cargo grid on the 600i Touring, as well as an engineering style room for components. At the moment none of these buttons are functional in game. This setup is mirrored on the opposite side of the ship. There's some more cargo storage, and some more component access. Heading back up to the top deck, will move towards the front of the ship. Back within this central area there are some small rooms off to the side, which would be for visitors or guests. Whilst not quite as nice as the master suite, these are still very nice plush rooms. There's four of these such rooms across the top deck, all looking very similar. Then moving through to the front of the top deck, there are some escape pods opposite the elevator which leads to the lower deck or out of the ship, and then at the front is the bridge cockpit. There's a central chair for the pilot slash captain, and two co-pilot gunner seats at the front. The pilot armament on the 600i is a trio of size 5 M7A laser cannons defaulting to fixed mounts. For forward facing firepower, that's considerable able to very quickly deal with most things, assuming you can place shots on target. The pilot also controls a selection of 16 size 3 missiles. Sadly, the racks can't be swapped out, but the individual missiles can if you have a preference for IR, EM or cross-section missiles. The 600i also comes with two remote turrets, one up top and one down below, both controlled by the two front seats in the cockpit. Each turret is equipped with two size 3 weapons, by default Panther laser repeaters. The performance of these turrets is okay, they add a little extra firepower to the ship, 
but each gunner has significantly less impact on the battle than the pilot, with each turret essentially putting out less damage than a single one of the pilot's three weapons. Defensively, the 600i is protected by two size 3 shield generators, which makes for a good level of protection, on a par with what you might expect from a hammerhead, for example. Overall combat performance is surprisingly good, at least if you can keep your target in front of you to hit with the large pilot weapons. Accordingly, the 600i fares much better against slower, less nippy targets. When facing such opponents, having the turrets manned is a real positive in providing a deterrent to fast targets, but for PvE combat missions, the 600i remains a solid choice, even up to some of the most valuable contracts. Usually, when reviewing Star Citizen ships, the most important consideration is about how functional the glass up front is, about how much you can see. The 600i Touring fares reasonably well in that regard, offering good visibility out to the front and sides, and to some extent above, with the only real blind spot being below the ship. But the cockpit nails the design purpose for the ship in showcasing whatever is outside, and making it feel like you're truly enjoying the view. The number of times you might find yourself just looking around, savouring a sunset or watching the clouds, the way that the 600i Touring displays the universe around you is notable. In terms of handling, this is a fairly heavy ship, and it accordingly feels like it in the turns. It's not bad per se, especially not for a ship of this size, but particularly when planetside it does mean that the 600i will drift somewhat when turning. That's probably summarised by the default SCM speed of 109 meters per second, which isn't slow, but certainly isn't fast. The same is true of the top speed, with a 600i Touring accepting commands up to 955 meters per second, which isn't going to set any records. But as a ship that's more about comfort and luxury than speed, perhaps that's okay. The stock quantum drive is the Odyssey, which is fairly middle of the road, it's not especially quick, nor woefully slow. Depending on what you've been doing with your 600i, and how scratched the paint is, or how low your missile stocks are running, costs can add up into the thousands, or even low tens of thousands of Alpha UEC to repair, rearm and refuel. That's normal though, for a ship of this size. Options for making back that cash are a little more limited. Despite the size of the 600i, there are only two tiny rooms for storing cargo in a cargo grid, which really isn't enough to make big sums through cargo trading. Thankfully, the 600i is pretty good at dealing with high-end combat contracts, which becomes the natural money-making option for the ship, and can more than cover the costs of running things. By way of loadout changes, I'd probably swap the Quantum Drive for an XL1, just for getting around more quickly. Some people may prefer gimbals up front for a more forgiving fire arc, but personally, I would keep the weapons as is. For those looking to take on the biggest of combat missions, maybe swapping the shield generators to FR-86s could be a good choice too. So, it's something that's said a lot, but this is clearly a review of the 600i Touring as it exists in-game right now. There's a significant rework on the horizon at some point, which may change much of this, but until then, the 600i Touring has some challenges to overcome. Before getting to those challenges, there's plenty that's good about the Touring model. The looks, obviously, are fantastic, with both inside and out living up to the high, luxury standard that Origin looks to sell. The surprisingly good combat performance against NPC targets is a strength, as well as the reasonable quantum drive range for those who truly want to use the 600i to tour the verse. But the 600i Touring is expensive, at 9.9 .9 million Alpha UEC, or $435 for real cash. For anyone wanting to do any kind of other gameplay loop, or even have a versatile ship, there are much better choices out there like the Constellation or the Corsair, which both come in cheaper. The other big challenge for the 600i Touring is the sister ship, 
the 600i Exploration, which comes in for half a million credits cheaper, all whilst having more utility by including a considerably bigger cargo bay as well as a vehicle bay. So the 600i Touring is not a smart purchase, it's not something you buy with your head. It's for those players who don't care about what's in their wallet, they only care about enjoying the verse and seeing the sights. And for such players, the 600i Touring is a great environment for living a life of luxury. I love the 600i Touring, but I couldn't in good conscience justify picking one up. At least, perhaps not until the rework. But do you agree? I look forward to reading your thoughts in the video comments. As always, if you're not yet subscribed, you might consider it if you got this far, to give YouTube the nudge to suggest similar videos to you in the future. And as always, it would be really helpful if you would press that like or dislike button to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most, so I can focus on making the most relevant videos in the future. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.